Hi all, welcome back to Guide to SolidWorks and today we are going to have a look at um, threads. Now I have done a tutorial on some basic threads before, creating a bolt, so I'll link that in the top corner. But today we're going to go a bit more specifically, we're going to look at how we can create some custom a custom thread and also how we go about um, creating a thread in a blind hole. So we'll run through these two processes and um, uh, we will create something that looks quite cool by the end hopefully um, uh, I'm going to try to make these as accurate as possible so we'll see how we get on um, if you are new to the channel please subscribe and if you are a returning viewer um, please hit the thumbs up button if you are liking the content or leave a comment below for anything that you'd like us to have a look at in the future so first of all let's start off with a custom thread so there might be the option where we go into our um, thread tool here and we haven't got one of the threads that we are after now we only do standard thread the standard thread um what so if you want to something different um uh, so say like a square thread then you would have to create this yourself now i'm just gonna have a go at creating a um M8 thread on this bar, this is an 8mm wide bar, and then we'll uh, modify that again in a bit to show you what we can, what we can do with that. So let's get started and uh, we'll start creating this first thread. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bottom of here and sketch on that face. I'm going to click on this circle here and I'm going to sketch on there. Okay. Um, I'm going to convert that entity of that bottom circle. I'm just going to click convert entities there, which um, puts a circle you sketch to the same diameter as the bar itself, which is 8 milli. Now, from there, what I'm going to go to is features and come to curvatures or curves, and I'm going to pick the helix and spiral. Okay, now, now we've got that. There's some preset information in here. Um, we can we've got some how define how we are going to make our helix. So this is working with height and pitch. Now we can do pitch and revolutions, revo uh, height and revolutions, um, height and pitch, or we can just do a spiral. Now I like to work with height and pitch. You can do either, but some of them might just create require a little bit of calculation to work it out. So height and pitch. I'm going for a constant pitch. I'm going to set my height in this case. Let's go 35. Take that up a little bit further. Um, my pitch for an M8 thread is going to be 1 mil. So I'm going to leave that at 1 mil. Okay. We can then decide whether we want a start angle or not. I'm going to leave it without one. And we can also decide whether we want our thread to go clockwise or, or counterclockwise. Uh, I'm just going to leave it on clockwise for this activity today. <coughs> so once we've decided that information, you'll see we've got a preview here of a helix coming up our um, shaft. So if I tick there, it will now sketch that onto our model, like so. Okay, so um, one more important thing with that, I'm just going to go back into there to edit there, um, is our start angle. Now, here I've set it to zero. If that is not set to zero, you will probably want to set that to zero because that means that if we look at where our spiral here or our helix starts, it starts going through. I'll drop that down. <coughs> going to show me the plane okay so we want to start in line with one of our um, uh, planes there so in this case actually my front plane is going across so I'm going to move my start position there of my helix to um, 90 degrees so if I go to 90 degrees And I'll just change that to minus so you're in the right direction. So I can go 270. 
If I go to 270 degrees there, it's going to start in line with my front plane, which just makes everything a bit easier for us as we create our um, or our shape for our thread in a moment. So I've turned that so that is in line with my front plane, like so, so that I can sketch my pattern or my shape for my thread on that front plane. Okay, so tick there. I've now got that helix in place exactly where I want it. Now I'm going to go to the front plane and I'm going to sketch on that front plane. And this is where I'm going to create my um, pattern for my or my shape for my thread. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set a construction line, center line, um, at the distance of my pitch that I want. So in this case, it's going to be one mil. Okay, now the pitch we've um, specified in uh, the helix pattern, and that will be related to what an M8 thread would be in this case. I'm just going to take the corner of this um, hidden center line here, or construction line, and pierce it to that um, edge of my spiral, like so. Okay, now once we've got that in place, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work from the far side, so the side away from where my spiral is, and create the shape of the thread that I want. So I'm going to come down here, line across, line up there, like so. Okay, now I'm just going to designate some sizes to this, but I need first of all just to put a center line in to show me where the center of this bottom section is here. Now, knowing this is an M8 thread, so the bottom across an M8 thread um, is going to be a quarter of the pitch. So that is going to be 0 0.25. It's a general rule um, for threads. Whatever the pitch is going to be, it's going to be about a quarter of that, the gap at the bottom. Uh, we then um, have the distance across our thread which is across there, is going to be 60 degrees. And one side from there to there is going to be 30. Should start pulling that back into place. Now, um, the distance or the drop down from the top to the bottom with an M8 thread um, is roughly was that picked up on? There we go. 0.54. Okay, and that should give us the shape of the thread that we're after. Now, depending on what shape thread you want, you would modify your roll to this, but that's just going to show you that first um, uh, option of a custom thread. I'm going to shit. I'm going to cut this up my profile. And then I'll show you how we could maybe create a square thread. So from there, I'm just going to exit that sketch. And I'm going to come to features. And then go to sweep cut. And I'm going to take my profile here. Now this is the important bit why we've done it below the actual um, uh, component here. Because if I've done this above it, then, um, uh, sorry, just let's close that sketch. If I've done this above this profile, then what will happen is um, <coughs> it won't actually cut into the, the model from the bottom. What it will do, it will leave us a cutout and a non-finished end on my thread. Uh, just closing this sketch off here while I'm talking. Um, so line from the top there down to the bottom. That just gives me that closed profile for that sketch there. Coming back out of that sketch. <coughs> I'm going to sweep that. So I'm going to take this profile. I'm going to sweep it along that path there. Give it a moment. And you'll see now all the way up there. Tick along. And we've now got 
that custom thread swept along that bar, like so. And that's how we create an, um, a custom M8 thread. Now, I did say we could change that, we could modify that, so let's have a look at how we could do that to a different thread type. So I'm just going to edit this sketch here for my thread. Come back in here, and I'm going to create a square thread instead. So that just creates a little bit of modification, so I'm just going to delete some of these lines. Okay, I'm leaving that um, uh, pitch line in because I'm going to use the same pitch. And I'm just going to come to a corner rectangle. I'm going to start from this bottom corner here and drag that out like so. Okay, now the rule for uh, a square thread is that the um, cutout of my thread is half the pitch across, which is 0.5, and half the pitch down which is again 0.5. So taking that shape, I can now just um, exit that sketch and it should now rebuild, but with a square thread instead of um, <coughs> the uh, custom M8 thread that we were looking at. So I'm just gonna hide that spiral pattern so you can see it a bit better. And there we get our square thread. So that's taking you through there how to create a custom M8 thread and also taking you through how to create a square thread. Now the last part of what I wanted to run through with you just to show you is um, how we create a blind th a thread in a blind hole. Now this is, there's lots of different ways of making this. You could just put a hole, cut a hole in it and um, thread that into your hole. Now, I don't like that process. The reason for that is if you just put a straight hole down and thread it, it's not real to life because um, when you cut a hole in something, especially if we was to um, create a hole in this sort of shape, we do have a lathe, so therefore we'd be boring it out with a drill piece. So therefore um, we'd have the V cut in the bottom. And that V cut is effectively our relief when we are actually um, creating a hole that we're going to put a thread on. If we have a completely flat bottom and the bolt bottoms out on it, uh, what generally happens is it gets stuck and you cannot really get it out very easily. Um, and you risk snapping the bolt trying to torque it out. So what I'm going to show you is a way that I would like I like to do it uh, using the hole tool and the thread tool. So. First of all, I'm going to go to my hole wizard here. <coughs> and I'm going to use um, the hole option here. Okay. Now, for this one, this is where we need to start realizing if what size um, hole we are going to create. So, for instance, for this one, I'm going to use an example of an M14. Um, and then we need to check what drill size we need. So, if you've got a Zeus table, you could use that. Or if you've got the internet, a quick Google on M14 drill size, um, you'll find it'll give you something around 10, uh, 12.8 millimeter drill. So it's pretty simple to do. You don't need to do any work working it out. So I've pre-done this and just had a quick look through. So what we want to do is we want to position that. So I've clicked to pick that I'm going to do a hole. Um, then I've selected that I want it to be a drill size. You'll find that if you come on here, it'll automatically come with a doubt. So I'm going drill size. And I'm going to select my drill size that I want for this. In this case, it's going to be 12.8. And I'm going to go down blind um, 40 mil. Okay, that'll do perfectly for this. Um, this is just setting the end condition for the bottom, dead dead bottom of my drill. So that's going to come right down to the lower point. Now what I want to do is I want to position it. So go to position, click on this top face, and it's going to ask me where I want to position it on that face. So right there in the center. So it's just picked up on the center of that circle and dropped it in there like so. And so I'm happy I've got that. I'm just going to tick. And that is inclu included that um, into the center of there. 
Now if I just do a quick cut through so you can see, you can see that we have got this um, uh, drill shape with what would be the end of a drill pan in the bottom there. Okay. Now I want to thread on this, put a thread on this, so let's leave that. So we're going to go to the thread option here. It's going to throw up uh, this information, uh, don't worry about that, it's just telling us that it um, not always fit for the thread it isn't actually going to necessarily be perfect for manufacture, so uh, not a massive issue there. Um, <coughs> what we are going to do here is we're going to add in our thread information. So the first thing I'm going to do is start with my location of my thread. So that's going to be starting from the top plane here on that inside edge. So I'm just going to click there. Okay, so it's not picked up the thread because it doesn't have an end condition here. So I'm going to go up to a selected position. Now that selected position is going to be this bottom edge. Now I could go blind, so if I turn that to blind, I can set the specific distance down. In this case it's saying 30, but I don't want it to go blind. I want to go down to that bottom edge there, like so. Okay, um, now what's happening at the top here is my thread is starting into the model so I'm going to offset that so offset that by the pitch of the thread which in this case is the 1.5 so I'm just going to reverse that which will take it above the component there like so now with this as well what we want to do um, in fact I'll just quickly show you if I tick there and say that's my completed thread we're going to have an we're going to have an error here or an issue if I just cut that through, you will see, so I've just sectioned that, that the thread actually cuts through the inside wall here, which is never going to happen in real life. Um, uh, so we need to edit that, we need to stop that from happening. So if I just come back out there, edit that thread. So that's the most common issue or most common error with the threads for um, blind holes, is that we go, we don't end the thread condition. Now what we need to do is go down to thread options here and what we want to do is trim the thread to the, with the end mm. face. <coughs> Excuse me, <coughs> where is this going? So we're going to trim the thread with the end face. So if we tick that <coughs> and now input that. Let's give that a moment. And you'll see now if I cut that through that the thread is now trimmed with this surface here at the bottom. Okay, I put that edge in so it's picked up the surface related to that edge, which is this bottom sort of cone shape here. So now my thread goes down to the base of there. Okay, so that's taking you through how we create a blind, a thread on a blind hold as well. Now, hopefully you have um, taken something away from that tutorial. Um, uh, I'll leave you with them two cross sections. So hopefully you've taken something away from that tutorial. Hopefully that was useful to you. Um, it's always good to have something, look at something a little bit more technical sometimes in terms of just a standalone tool rather than constantly making these complex models. Um, have a go at using that. If you need to use it in a model, hopefully it'll be useful for you. Uh, if you've enjoyed this tutorial, please give us a thumbs up. And again, if you are new to the channel, please subscribe. Um, every subscriber helps me support uh, my del delivery of my content. Um, and let's keep building. So I will see you in the next video. And thanks for watching. Bye for now.